business this morning. The, the um, text actually that we read just now, Captain Raymond read for us is Romans 10, 1 to 21. But I just want to bring up three uh, points that I believe it will help to understand us more about God's righteousness in our life. Uh, last week when Major Mark speaks about Romans 12, I think, yeah, he mentioned a little bit about Romans 10 verse 9, which is the first uh, points that I'm going to bring up this morning. It says in verse 9, confess with your mouth. Confess with your mouth. If we go back to uh, Romans uh, 10, 1 to 2, Paul actually is talking about his prayer and his desire for Israel, that Israel may be saved. Likewise, I believe most of us here, we have that longing and desire to pray for our family. We come to our Heavenly Father and just ask that, you know, it's our desire and our prayer that our family members who have not accepted Christ yet and are not saved, that is our heart desire that God is going to save them. We talk about our spouses, our husbands, wife, children, our mother, our sister, our brothers, family circle who has not been experiencing the love and salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Confess with your mouth. Share the gospel. Talk about Jesus. You know, if we think about Jesus in his childhood and when he's in his 12 years old, we, we know the story that Jesus spent his time in Jerusalem at his young age listening and asking questions about the law of God, talking to the priests, talking to the doctors. And he spent time learning and learning and learning about the word of God. And uh, I think if we just imagine and put Jesus in our generation now. I don't think so, you know, he will be doing, listening and, you know, preaching the word of God because nowadays the generation, what do they do? Study, right? We have to study because we need to uh, uh, attain something in our life that uh, it's for our future. For the working people, we concentrate in our work. We need to be more, we need to do well so that we will have promotion or we will be, uh, we, we will grow in, in what we are doing that, you know. So these are the things that we are, are actually busy. And I think if we put Jesus into our generation now, uh, Jesus is studying, Jesus is mingling with friends and Jesus is uh, even playing with your hand, his handphone, uh, uh, maybe doing selfies and things like that, going to McDonald's and eating and things like that. But you see, our Jesus Christ is a, a, a super ordinary child that, you know, at his young age, he already started learning and talking and preaching the word of God until he grew up as an adult and uh, he bring this uh, to his disciples. And the disciples were influenced of what Jesus is doing. How about us? You know, are we bold enough to speak up and stand up and preach our Lord Jesus Christ to every single person that we meet, to our family? Okay, we always have, you know, the very difficult uh, uh, thing to do uh, is to preach the gospel to our family. I don't know whether you, 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 you agree with me with that, right? Sometimes our family, they see us like their enemies when we are preaching the word of God to them or when we are sharing the word of God to them. It's, it's so difficult 
because I, I experienced that myself. And I'm still experiencing on this, until this time, until this point of time of my life. And I believe that we, have, we can relate and we can experience the same thing. Okay, uh, but God, uh, Jesus is telling us to preach boldly and preach from our mouth his word. It's okay to share our testimonies and to share our life story, but the very uh, 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 important thing is that when we preach and when we share our testimony, we should be sharing the love of God and not our own story, you see? I remember uh, this movie called God is Not Dead. I don't know whether you have watched that, young people. God is Not Dead, part one. And there's a portion here that uh, in a classroom, it's a philosophy class, there's this professor who is an atheist. And you know, uh, when he sits, uh, when the, the, the students are sitting in the classroom like that, he came in and he just said to the class that, you know, you write in your paper that God's, God, is, God is dead. And you sign and you will pass the, 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 the subject. Okay? And there is this one uh, young man who is not very comfortable of what he hears from the atheist uh, professor. And, and he wasn't actually agreeing with that, that he has to write God is dead and then you sign and you pass your subject. You see, so he's a bit reluctant and everybody start writing in a piece of paper that God is dead. Okay, so when he start to, I, I don't know whether he argued with the, the professor and, and the professor questioned him a lot and they end up of like, Asking that George, his name is George, now I remember. Asking George to come and defend his God. That God is not dead, okay? So, he did it. And even his girlfriend actually was hesitant and asking, his, and asking George to stop. Just do it, just sign the paper, just put God is dead and that's it. But he stood up and speak up from his, his own mouth that God is not dead and the God that is serving is a God that is alive in his life and you know that you know he was asking the professor how come God can give choices whether we want to write God is not dead or we don't we, we write God God is, is 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 alive you see okay God is not dead or God is dead okay so uh, he started to speak up and started boldly to speak up that God is not dead. And you know, everybody in the class, they stood up and said, God is not dead. So this is a very good illustration, actually, that you know, this is just a movie. But I think it helps us to understand when we say, speak up boldly from your mouth. Speak up about your, the Lord Jesus Christ that you are talking about. The one that, you, he, uh, the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ that saves you. You know, I heard many young people and uh, adults will say that why I can't just keep to myself that I'm saved, that I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. No need to tell everybody, la, why am I show off? This is not show off. This is declaring that God, the God that you are keeping in your heart, the God that you are received and you accepted is a God that is alive in our life. And we need to share this to other people so that they will know Christ. They will know the, the Christ that we are actually serving is a Christ that is alive in our heart. So what is the story? It's not just a story. It is a fact that Jesus suffered, he died and resurrected so that we will have eternal life. He is the one who proclaimed the message of love. And if we quote John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is what Jesus Christ wants us to proclaim, the love of God to our family, to our friends, to our colleagues. 
Okay, the second point is believe in your heart and justify it. You know, I, 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 I have a lot of friends who they will say, they claim that, oh, I'm saved because I go to church. I go to Christian church. But we are talking about believe in your heart and justify it. Believe in your heart. Believing is just, it's very easy to say. You know, when I was young, I thought I'm saved because I belong to a Christian family. My father, my mother, my sisters, all of my relatives, they are Christians. And I thought I'm also a Christian lah, because I, I, I come with a Christian family, you see. And I share this in my discipleship class, that how did I get to know the Lord? I get, that I get to know the Lord, but I didn't accept the Lord in my heart as my personal Savior, because I just go to church. Everybody go to church on Sunday. Yeah, we invite people, you come to our church lah. We have a very nice worship in our church. We sing songs, we have band, you know, we have people who encourage you and things like that. But that is not going to save that person you are bringing to church. If you are not going to speak up Jesus in this person. So believing in your heart that you can testify that you are saved and you accepted Christ from the bottom of your heart. My mouth will tell of your righteous deeds, O oh Lord, of your, of your saving acts all day long, though I know not how to relate them all. Psalms 71, 15. You know, I, I want to share this story with you. I have a privilege of working with youth and children for many, many years. I think about 20, 22 years. And we always encounter people saying that, oh, you pray for me. I believe, I believe in God. But when you started to talk about the love of God to them and to, to ask them to accept Jesus as their Lord, and so, oh, no, 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 I'm a Buddhist. You just pray for me, lah. I will believe in your prayer. Is that enough? How to pray for a person who doesn't believe, who doesn't have faith in the Jesus that you are, you know, praying to? Fifteen years ago, I, I, I have the privilege of working with two young people, and the mother is a young mom. And this young mother, and this mother always tells us, uh, I call her Lisa. La. Her name is Lisa. And Lisa always says that, oh, I'm a Christian because I go to church. I'm a Christian because I do what other people do in the church. All right? And one day, the second daughter came to me and said, Auntie, I think you need to talk to my mother because I don't think so my mother is a Christian. She just said that she's a Christian because she goes to church. People will bring her to church. But I don't remember the time that she knelt down on the mercy seat and prayed the Lord's, uh, the sinner's prayer and received salvation. You know, the mother is uh, actually uh, suffering from very bad anxiety and sometimes she doesn't know what she's doing. She's a lonely mom. So when my, my girl, when the girl told me that, I contemplated and I said, yes, we are going to talk to your mother. I think a few days, days later, the mom died. Okay? The mom died because of suffocation. She dropped her cigarette on her mattress and she was suffocated and then she died. 